now that we've reminded ourselves of the differences between dependent and independent samples, we're going to start running hypothesis tests and confidence intervals, for that matter, on those dependent and independent samples. So we're starting off in section 11.2, which is we're going to be looking at matched pairs data, in particular the mean for matched pairs data. So let's read this. A study was carried out to determine whether right key touch therapy was useful in the reduction of mean pain level in chronic pain sufferers, including cancer patients. The pain level reported by a random sample of 13 patients before and after right key touch therapy is shown in the table. We are going to use the results to determine whether there was a reduction in pain level after the right key therapy. All right, so we're gonna start off with why is this a dependent sample? And just for the record, I don't know if I'll be able to fit this entire example because it's several pages long into one video. I'll try, but if I can't, then we'll end up doing two videos out of this. All right, so it's a dependent sample because it's the same group of patients measured twice. Namely, you have these 13 patients and they're measured before and after. If You can see that right there. So that before and after is what makes it a dependent sample. It's one group of pain sufferers measured at the beginning and at the end. So that's a dependent sample. All right, well, that's done. That's pretty simple. All right, now that we know it's a dependent sample, then they're asking us to find the differences for each patient before minus after. All right, so we're gonna do this um, in the way that they tell us to. Otherwise, you actually are open to use either direction. You could do before minus after or after minus before, but we're gonna do before minus after as it is requested right here. All right, so what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to label L1 to be my before group and L2 to be my after group. And then I want to find the differences. Now, we all could do this in our heads. You know, 6 take away 3 is 3, 2 take away 1 is 1, and so on. However, I also want to teach you how to be able to do this with a calculator. So let me go grab the calculator, go to Stat, go to Edit. I'm going to clear out this old data set from an old problem. And I'm going to type in the before group into L1. So 6, 2, 2, 3, 4, 2. All right, so the before group goes in L1. Then I'm going to put the after group in L2. Sorry, I hope that wasn't too boring for you to watch for a few seconds. All right, so now I want to find L3, which is what I'm really interested in, which is the differences. And because they set it up to be before minus after in our problem, then we want to take L1 minus L2. So let me write that in real quickly. There we have it. So D is your difference. That's before minus after. That would be L1 minus L2. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go up to L3. So make it so that the L3 is dark. I'm going to take second... 1, that's L1, so it says L1 down here, minus second 2. So it's saying, hey, make L3 equal to L1 minus L2. And if I press enter, it'll find all the values for me, just like that. Nice, huh? Now, of course, this particular data set was so simple, you could do this in your head, but um, it's a very nice trick for more complicated data sets, for longer data sets, and also, um, it stores all that information in L3, and that way we might use it later on for conducting the test itself. All right, and that's the instructions for that. Now we need to find the standard deviation and the mean for this data set, and that's one of the reasons we wanted to get the calculator to do this for us, because once I have these in L3, to find the mean and the standard deviation, I will go to Calculate, pick one variable, Stats, and I want to tell it L3 because that's where my differences are. So second three, leave the frequency list blank, and go down to calculate and press enter. And I can see that the mean is 1.923. And since this is a sample, I'm going to use S, which is 1.605. Which shouldn't be any shock to anybody because the only time we really get to use sigma is for probability distributions. All right, so there we have it. The mean was 1.6 or 1.923, and the standard deviation was 1.605. And you know what? I'm actually going to give these some notations. One second. Oh, sorry, they were notated. I'm sorry. Just to remind you, D bar 
is the sample mean of the differences, right? Mean, because it has a little bar over its head. And SD is standard deviation of the differences. D stands for difference. 